So Contractor Plus is a B2B SaaS platform going after the small contractor market. They're developing a collaborative ERP platform to match the way small contractors collaborate with each other. I also think they are undervalued because of their go-to market strategy. I decided to lead the round because I thought Contractor Plus was undervalued and I still think it is. I look for three different things, really good founders, big market with network effect, and also a platform that eventually can boost sustainability. The way I come up with valuation is looking at the market, what the comparables is, looking at the valuation multiples. So I separated out the recurring revenue and the one-time revenue. They both had different valuation multiples. I look at okay, how much the founders are trying to raise. Based on that amount, what can they achieve in the next 12 to 24 months? So then I go in the future and look at the value, what the valuation will be. And then I remove out all the capital raised and then discount it to the present at a pretty steep discount rate. For example, some of them are up to 80% discount rate. And that's what gives me today's valuation. So there are multiple methods that I use for this valuation. Some of it is the discount method. Other ways I look at is probability method, looking at different probable scenarios that the company can achieve and what the valuation will be by then. And then I do a weighted average of all of it. In order to determine the round size, I work closely with the founders to do a bottoms up operational model. And that included every person they're going to hire, all the different operational expenses, all the marketing expense and how that translates into cash into the company and revenue and all that. So we took all that 100K MRR, what would they need to raise in order to achieve that? And based on the cash flow projections, it showed that we needed around $430,000. The money will be used for two main things. The first one is marketing. So we're gonna have, uh, be spending money to acquire customers. Based on the last round, they've been able to optimize their customer acquisition strategy. So we want to double down on this and increase the revenue. The second part is growing the team for product development. There's quite a bit to be done to perfect the product for the small contractors in order to really solve their pain point. So what we want to do here is hire A players, accelerate the product roadmap, and then move on to the other verticals. So the projections were created using a bottoms up operational and financial model. We have about 15 different modules. For example, we have the SGNA as a whole module, the whole team hiring plan over the next few years as a different module. We have subscription, different verticals, and also the marketing, how that converts into different cohorts. All of that have a lot of variables in there. So I work with the co-founders to figure out what those assumptions are. Wherever there's data, we take those data from prior cohorts and put it into the model. Wherever there's no data, we make some educated guesses. An example of that is a free user comes into the pipeline. Let's say we spend X dollars to acquire a user. Maybe a month later, they become a subscriber. After 18 months, maybe they become, they don't renew their subscription, become a free active user. Eventually they delete the app. All of that is being captured based on a percentage. And we modeled out how that particular user is gonna flow through the whole, through the whole journey. And that is all that operational data is then flowing into a financial model that is being used as the projection. For me, all of that, these are all just thinking tools. I want the founders to really understand their business and then wherever, wherever there are gaps in their knowledge, by working with me, they've been able to go and try to figure out how that works in their business. Even at the end of the day, even if we threw away the model, doesn't matter. It's the process of creating that that makes the founders really good at um, scaling up their business. We have different verticals. So when it comes to the base subscription, most of it is just cloud cost. After we acquire the customer, it's basically cloud cost to service them. So we have about, it comes to about 90% gross margin there. Then we have add-on subscriptions such as call and SMS. Those are low margins based on the different markups. Those haven't been determined. Now, if we look at the other verticals, it's a pure 100% gross margin there because there's no cost. It's just add-on. An example is insurance referrals. So a percentage of our users go 
and apply for insurance. And Contractor Plus receives a referral fee for every return quote. So there's no additional expense from their end and all of that is just pure revenue with no cost. Another one would be any of their lead generation. So by developing the platform to facilitate that, it's very minimal cost. They're just referring people to each other and just receiving a fee in exchange. What makes Contractor Plus different from its competitors is really going after the small contractors. About 80% of the contractors in the US are small contractors. The competitors, because of the way, because they need to grow and uh, show revenue, high revenue and cover their overhead, they have to go after the high ticket customers. The big contractors work in a particular way, they have a high willingness to pay. On the other hand, the small contractors are very price sensitive. They, the willingness to pay is very low. So their strategy is going after those small contractors by keeping their overhead low. So most of the development team is based out of India, so, and they are able to keep a lower price. So it's cheaper for these small contractors to join Contractor Plus early on. But as they grow, which is what this platform is for, it becomes more expensive than competitors. But as you know, with any ERP system, it's very hard, it's sticky. Once you build your business on it, it's very hard to switch. So we're hoping to provide enough value to keep them on their long term and make money in other different verticals. For example, FIP payment facilitation is huge. Contractor Plus receives around 55 basis points for all the payment that they process through their platform. In the long run, based on the projections, it looks like base subscription will only be a small portion of the business. The way small contractors work, one day they may be general contractor subcontracting a part of a job to someone else. And the next day, they may be a subcontractor to that same other contractor. The way the other platforms are developed, it's mainly around one contractor being the GC and the other being subs. By allowing this bi-directional collaboration, Contractor Plus is really developing that platform for the way small contractors work. Yeah, if we go beyond uh, projections and numbers, investors should look into Contractor Plus because Firstly is the founders. The founders are working for minimal salary. In fact, the CEO hasn't been taking a salary since the beginning for about four years now. So they are all in, very scrappy. They've been able to do a lot with very little amount of capital. I am personally betting on them because I believe they'll be able to figure things out. There are projections, there are all these that we have to put a story and a, a linear story to all of this, but that's not the way businesses work and the founder the co-founders have been working in that way they've been pivoting doing whatever it takes to grow the business and right now the numbers do prove that next is they are really developing a true platform with network effect a lot of uh, startups claim to pick uh, to be a platform but it's really hard to be, build a platform and contractor is really doing that because they will have the majority of the contractors on their platform eventually if they really execute on their plan and roadmap. And by having most of these small contractors and plat on their platform, they will be able to build a lot of different verticals that will be very relevant for the, for that, for the small contractors on the platform. The other verticals that Contractor Plus can build is for example, payment facilitation. This is already being built. They currently make about 55 basis point for all the payments they facilitate. So another vertical is the materials marketplace. They will enable contractors to buy materials directly through their platform from local shops and then go pick them up. So there is a commission they gain from, from enabling a lot of these transactions. Next one is a tools rental. The contractors on the platform are entering all the tools they own in the asset management module. That allows them to check out tools or schedule different tools to be used for different jobs. Now the platform already knows when those tools are free. They could enable contractors to rent those tools out and facilitate that whole transaction without much time from the contractors themselves. A small percentage of such a big market could be massive. Those are two great examples of other verticals. Contractor Plus will change the contractor industry by firstly really improving labor productivity. Currently, the US is facing a shortage of contractors. I believe that if, if executed well, it's gonna enable all these jobs to be more efficient and require less labor overall in the US based on the need. And secondly, the reason I got involved, I think Contractor Plus has a huge potential 
to increase sustainability in the contractor industry. When it comes to sustainability, there are many ways that Contractor Plus could nurture small contractors to be more sustainable. Mm. Big contractors are already being monitored. They have big job sites and those they have, there's a lot of pressure for them to be more sustainable. On the other hand, small contractors just do their job, throw these materials away in the trash and move on. If we are able to really nudge these contractors to be more sustainable, I think that's where the biggest leverage is. Now on their platform, they are already, contractors are already selecting materials for any job. Contractor Plus could nudge them to select more sustainable materials. And then Contractor Plus will have the ground truth data that a particular job installed X material instead of Y material. Now the delta in that did offset some carbon. So Contractor Plus could monetize those carbon credits and share some of that with the contractors. Another way they could promote sustainability with small contractors is by offering these small contractors an easy way to recycle the materials they, can, they are taking off the job. For example, they take off some PVC piping. They could be connected to a local recyclers where they could drop these off. They make some cash. Contractor Plus makes a little bit of cash and those recyclers get material that already separated out and that really helps promote sustainability. Lastly is doing a lot of route optimization. By helping contractors select and schedule jobs based on their location, it can really reduce the amount of driving that these contractors are doing. When it comes to the competitive landscape, Contractor Plus is really differentiating itself by going after the small contractors. And I, I believe that that's where the biggest growth can happen. There are many players. In fact, most of the players in the market are going after the bigger contractors. An exit could Contractor Plus could come in uh, different ways. Firstly, which I believe is the most likely, they'll probably be acquired by one of their competitors. Contractor Plus is going in toward a different market as discussed. They're really going toward the small contractors. In order for the bigger players to go after these small contractors who are very price sensitive, they're gonna have to change their core product, which would cannibalize their existing customer base. For example, just lowering their price to go after these smaller customers would mean that the high paying customers would also be paying that new price. So they wouldn't wanna do that. On the other hand, they could go after the smaller market by acquiring Contractor Plus, keeping it as a different brand and just capturing that whole market. That's one way. The next way would be private equity acquisition. I believe within five years, Contractor Plus would be in a position where it would make sense for a private equity firm to acquire them at a, an eight times EBITDA. And um, that should be a very lucrative exit for all the investors. And lastly, it could, um, and that's a mix between the two, maybe just keep growing the business, buy investors out, as well long term when there's enough cash flow or go public eventually.